Welcome back to another video in our Carl video series. My name is Rob from Ahead Simulations and, and today we're going to walk you through five things to try once you have received your Carl Pro unit. So number one we're going to start with does not involve the software just yet. Number one is to swap out the ears that were included on your Carl. While the fun and most interesting part of Carl Pro is probably the software and the microphones, um, there's still a lot of other really great uses for it. Otoscopy, wax removal, serum management, ear impressions, and hearing aid fitting. Um, so today, we're going to pretend as if we're going to do an ear impression. So I want to put in a durable ear, our translucent ear, into my Carl Pro so we can do an impression effectively. How we do that, we open the top of Carl, we'll see the microphone ears are plugged in through these cords. So I'm going to unplug that cord. There we go. And now unhook Carl's ear. And I have my durable one here for ear mold impressions. I'm going to click that in. And ta-da, we are all set. We can use Carl for impressions. So that's number one. Try switching out the ears that came with your Carl Pro. Number two, we're going to look at doing a recording with your Carl Pro. So here we're going to go back over to the interface and at the top right is your menu. This is what you see when you first log on to your Carl Pro for the first time. When I click recording, this is the screen that you're going to see. So a whole bunch of options which we'll have another video to talk about but in this case, I'm going to do something very, very simple. I'm going to stick with no hearing loss for Carl. I'm not going to apply any ear canal transforms. And I'm going to keep a low headroom because I'm not playing any loud noises. It's just me talking right now. I'm going to record for the 10 seconds. And I don't care too much about the file name. When I click record, you'll see the screen says it's recording. Carl right now is listening, listening, listening. He's oriented a little bit to the side of me, so it's going to be able to be noticed that you know he's hearing in one ear a little bit more than the other because he's not looking at me. And what we just saw was the WAV file being saved directly to my computer so I can access it. Part of the reason why I just did recording as number two is because Carl is not required to be calibrated before you do your recording. Now number three, now we're going to look at calibrating Carl. So we want to do a hearing test. That's a big functionality. We might even want to get a little crazy and do some masking. So we're going to go over to calibration. Now this is the screen. You can see I very, very recently calibrated my Carl and I calibrated to the circumoral transducer. So when I click begin calibration, what it's going to be doing is measuring a noise floor for my environment. I usually should not talk here, but you can see that it is recording the noise floor and most likely it's going to be a little bit louder because I was talking. So this is the graph that you see. You can see at every single frequency, it'll tell you what your noise floor was. And this will be saved inside the software so that it can make any corrections that it needs. And this is also to know that any audiograms that are um, have a more mild hearing loss than the thresholds that you see here, Carl is not going to respond effectively in those regions. So as you could imagine, once you're in a more quiet environment, these values will decrease. If you're in a louder environment, um, then they will be higher. I'm not going to go through a whole uh, calibration because I already did that, but you can see I can choose which transducer I calibrate to, and then I'm going to display or I'm going to present a 70 dB tone at each of these frequencies on the left and right ear so Caro can determine he is hearing effectively, he's applying the right values to what he's hearing, and he's ready for a hearing test. So that's number three, is you're calibrating your Caro. Number four is going to be creating your own audiogram. So for that, we're going to go into the admin portal. When I click on that, you'll see the login pop up. My password for my particular Carl is audio Carl, but your password will be either on your Chromebook or will be provided to you. When I log in, 
you'll see there's a little bit different of a view. You just have audiograms and playlists here. And instead of the random button that we saw before, we see a create new audiogram. We can still see all of our audiograms here that are loaded into Carl. And when we click on them, we can either edit or delete them. But today we're going to be trying to create our own audiogram. We're going to create a test case. And we're going to stick with an unmasked audiogram. We're going to be nice and simple. When I click next, you'll see here's the plot that we can put in our, all our values for creating our own audiogram. You can see there's a shaded region here that says Carl may not respond properly here. This is because these were our measured values for the noise floor during our calibration step. So it's keeping those values in mind and it's telling you that, hey, if you place thresholds here, Carl may not respond properly. That doesn't stop you from placing thresholds because you can place thresholds um, you know, at a quieter volume even though you may currently be in a louder environment because you have intention to go over to a sound booth later. That's totally possible. But for right now, we're going to be very, very lazy and go 30 across the board. All right, so I just typed all those in the bar. You can also go through and click on the actual graph of what as well if that is preferred. And I put in all the octaves and the inter octaves, but you can also just put however many values that you want. I click save, you'll see it successfully save the test. And when I scroll down, you'll be able to see that in our audiogram list now. So that's number four, creating your own audiogram. Finally, number five to try with your new Carl is to actually test his hearing. So I just created my test case and now I want to test it. So I click it, Carl is telling me beside me that he has received the audiogram and now I'm going to step through a whole hearing test pretending as though Carl is my patient. Instead of responding by clicking a button or raising his hand, his shoulders are going to light up to indicate that he's heard a tone and then I'm going to find my thresholds I'm going to plot them on this graph here we go I got really lazy on the left ear here and then when I'm done I can click finish and it will show me what was the actual case that was given to Carl and what were the values that I read and you can see we were unfortunately only correct at the one frequency and this was the same case that we just created. You can switch over to a single pane view as well if you'd rather or if you'd prefer. And now it's giving you a prompt at the bottom which is select from the list to try another audiogram. So that was a first little intro to what you can do with your Carl Pro and a few recommendations to get up and going. Again, number one, switch the ear that came with your Carl. Number two was record. Number three was calibrate your Carl. Number four, create your own audiogram. And number five, test Carl's hearing. We'll have a whole bunch of other videos walking you through um, in more detail the specific features. But as for now, hopefully that gave you enough to start experimenting and start trying out your Carl. If there's any questions at all that's not covered in our video series or that you still have, please feel free to reach out to a member of our team.